afternoon everyone uh, i am sudarshan uh, from this co- this one college uh, nmmit today i am going to present a, a seminar topic on a liquid file system so before uh, going to present i have any one of no about uh, like okay now it's audible okay thank you all uh, Uh, today I am going to present on a liquid file system. Now it's audible. Okay. Uh, uh, so what exactly is a liquid file system? Uh, liquid file system is an uh, a deduplication file system uh, for the virtual machine image, uh, storing of the virtual machine image. It's specially designed for the large scale uh, virtual machine deployment in a cloud. So can anyone aware of we can run a virtual machine over the cloud? Uh, yes, we can uh, run virtual machine over the cloud. So b- the biggest problem uh, is that uh, storage of the virtual machine over the cloud. So an effort made to uh, reduce the storage consumption uh, by using the deduplication technique uh, on a st- uh, storage area network cluster. But due to the cost limitation, uh, it does not uh, satisfy the large demand on the uh, storage of the virtual machine images. so virtual machine has several feature uh, the liquid machine has uh, uh, s- several features uh, some of our uh, uh, fast uh, deployment of the virtual machine using the peer to peer data transfer protocol and the low storage consumption using deduplication techniques and instant cloning of uh, a virtual machine images sorry uh, and on demand fetching of the data blocks uh, over the network and caching with the local disks using the copy and read technique uh, i'll go to the feature uh, by looking into the next slides uh, before going to the architecture of uh, virtual machine i want to make a note of uh, different image formats of the virtual machine and deduplication techniques okay mm, the image format is a, a, ma- a raw image format uh, and a sparse image format so what exactly the raw image format a raw image format simply copies the byte by byte data of the into the file uh, whereas a sparse image format uh, it will doing uh, some complex mapping of the data blocks uh, uh, on the, onto the physical disk uh, what uh, but uh, according the measure performance measure uh, raw image format will be a more performable for the io operations uh, but uh, raw image format uh, bit large in size and the deduplication techniques uh, so before going that uh, uh, what is deduplication a uh, deduplication is a, a specialized compression method for uh, eliminating the repeating data and storing in a, so storing a single copy of the data uh, so it effectively utilizes a storage uh, area there are two types uh, mainly there's a fixed size chunking and a variable size chunking so fixed size chunking will simply uh, divide the data block of a fixed size Uh, where uh, variable size chunking it will some uh, use some complex techniques uh, like rubbing fingerprint on a sliding window of a file content uh, but uh, the according to an, uh, according to the performance uh, measure uh, fixed size chunking will be the uh, more uh, good enough uh, deduplication ratio will be given now come to the design of the liquid uh, liquid that is uh, it uh, its system architecture is like a single meta server with a hot backup and a multiple data server as well as a multiple clients so now we are seeing the picture of the liquid file system or uh, liquid architecture the meta server uh, it will contains uh, all the fingerprints <coughs> that is calculated during the deduplication technique uh, and also it contains some other information like um, name spaces and mapping from the data blocks uh, to the fingerprints and data server uh, it will contains uh, uh, itself uh, the data blocks and its replica will be stored in the some uh, the other uh, data servers and as well as the client is a posix uh, client uh, specification uh, when a liquid uh, when the vm image is accessed uh, the client will uh, liquid client will access the metadata uh, from the meta server and uh, as well as uh, its uh, data blocks from the data server and provides an integrated layer uh, for the virtual machine so this liquid client uh, as an uh, it act as a layer between your virtual uh, or hypervisor and uh, your uh, liquid data blocks so how deduplication happens in a liquid 
uh, it is based on uh, fixed size chunking uh, because uh, uh, when you are using a fixed size chunking it will be uh, more simpler uh, for storing the data blocks as well as uh, uh, main consideration is on the uh, some of um, os of 32 bit os uh, and that os file size uh, of 4 kb blocks and the block size uh, block size choice the block size choice uh, uh, is of uh, uh, because uh, what what type of block is uh, block size choosing is that mainly uh, depends on the performance because if you are choosing the smaller very smaller block size uh, like a 4kb then it will be give good performance uh, on the deduplication but uh, when you are transferring the data blocks over the network it will be uh, cumbersome because more number of uh, data packets will be uh, or data blocks will be transferring over the network so to get uh, a good performance uh, the block size will be the multiples of 4 uh, that is uh, from 256kb to 2mb and optimization on fingerprint calculation so uh, fingerprint calculation uh, op can be optimized using uh, 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 using a uh, md5 uh, when it is a message digesting uh, uh, algorithm and uh, sha1 algorithm so that uh, you can produce a collision resistant uh, hash value and storing of the data blocks so when you are storing uh, when uh, when you are saying that fixed size chunking uh, the data blocks will be much more and even uh, when you are reading the data blocks uh, like open closed system call it will be overhead of the kernel so liquid comes with uh, its own uh, data block storage uh, its uh, data blocks uh, uh, in the uh, file like uh, made up of a group of three files one is an extinct file and another one is a bitmap file and another one is an uh, index file which contains a mapping of the data blocks with the reference count and, uh, and ma mapping of the fingerprint with the reference count so uh, how the fingerprint is fetched from the data server uh, the fingerprint is fetched like this mm, an extinct file is, uh, is first uh, fingerprint is uh, uh, contains the extinct file id where uh, extinct file uh, will contain uh, will contain the exactly what what the data and that offset is given for searching of the uh, that uh, searching of the f uh, that particular data block when that particular data block is searched and it will be given it back to the client then how does uh, the communication takes place uh, within the components so using the heartbeat protocol uh, this heartbeat protocol means uh, uh, to check the connections or uh, health status of your data server like whether the data server is in a proper uh, way or uh, how the data server will uh, manage its data and uh, and uh, to make the connection between the meta server and the data server it will frequently transfer the messages uh, between the uh, your data server and the uh, meta server and the your uh, and using the p2p data block sharing this p2p data block sharing is used for accessing the data blocks from the data server uh, to the liquid clients mm, so this p2p data block uh, is inspired from uh, bittorrent peer to peer protocol and by using this uh, it will produce a bloom filter uh, so that uh, a very less number of uh, false positives while accessing the data blocks next one is on demand uh, data block fetching so when you are accessing uh, some data uh, we we need to access only required uh, data blocks unless uh, it's not required and no need of uh, use bring it into the no need of uh, it's bring it into the cache so that on demand data block fetching so once the data is required and it will be fetched and bring it to the uh, client cache and other features are uh, uh, fast virtual machine cloning so when you are cloning a virtual machine like uh, uh, copying the same exa exact copy of the virtual machine to another machine in, it will take a, a huge amount of time because the virtual machine image may be uh, several gigabytes so instead of uh, copying that much of gigabytes you simply copy the metadata file into the virtual machine and it will be done in a, uh, within milliseconds so this is the fast uh, cloning virtual machine and the fault tolerance as you have seen in the design of uh, um, architecture of uh, liquid uh, there is a meta server with a hard backup uh, this uh, um, meta server when the when the meta server crashes then its hot backup is in the shadow of meta server so it acts as a uh, read only format until the meta server is set up by the administrator and uh, your data data server contains a, a replica of all the data blocks so if one data server uh, uh, crashes then other data server will automatically fix the work and it will uh, do it, the deduplication or uh, access the data and the garbage collection uh, liquid comes uh, with uh, its own garbage collection 
like uh, uh, i already told it contains a bitmap file which containing the like bits 0 or 1 uh, when the data block is unused it, bit, it will be changed so that uh, it can directly uh, uh, remove the unused block so that it, that block is used by uh, another uh, for the for storing the data and finally i mean conclusion that uh, liquid provides an high io performance doing the deduplication work in meantime and uh, it supports a fast cloning of virtual machines and on demand data block fetching that's it and i borrowed this paper from <coughs> um, uh, some uh, zun zao thank you no questions yeah so question here is you can achieve this kind of thing with uh, cluster of chef so why huh this liquid fs is providing what so you can achieve uh, similar kind of thing with cluster of chef right by but cluster is only uh, like distributed file system Does you can uh, huh? create a replicate a replicate but it is in dedu deduplication file system deduplication file system Um. Uh, wait, wait a sec, wait a sec, wait a sec. Uh, it, uh, in your previous slides, you mentioned copy and read. In no. your last slide, you mentioned copy and write. Yeah. Which one is true? Uh, copy and read for reading the data blocks. And copy and read for? Reading the data blocks. Why do you need to copy? Uh, like, uh, if uh, the, that data block is uh, required, and it is uh, directly copied to the client cache, client of the liquid file machine. So, uh, point is, hmm. if you're reading, yeah, and not storing something, okay. So then, why do you need to copy and read? Uh, if the if another virtual machine needs the same data block, then it will be in the client cl client of the liquid uh, uh, file system. Yeah, cache that data. He wants to yeah uh, like keep all the images. But just keeping only the unique uh, pieces, which brings me to this point. You mentioned fixed uh, uh, size chunking and uh, yeah. variable size chunking. Huh. First of all, what is chunking? Secondly, you mentioned why fixed is good enough for you. Yeah. Uh, why is that? Uh, why is what is chunking? Uh, chunking is uh, uh, dividing the data blocks uh, into small pieces. And then, <coughs> of why d why do you want to divide them into small pieces? For a fast access or uh, say, say for example, if uh. you are storing the like one file yeah. which is one GB yeah. and splitting it in uh, five pieces and storing two hundred MB, five two hundred yeah. MBs, you're not essentially st uh, saving any space. Why uh, do you yeah, want to split um, it up? Uh, because uh, the same replica may be contained in some chunks, so that I can uh, 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 st uh, what same uh, re replica might be containing in same chunk as some, some chunks, some other chunks. You want to mean that some other images might have similar kind of chunk by uh, sized uh, data? I didn't get to. So, same chunks, I, uh, please explain that the part. The question is why would you need deduplication? Uh, for storing the virtual machine images. That's absolutely incorrect. Huh? That's absolutely incorrect. Okay. You don't need deduplication just to store your images in the cloud. If you are defining that, uh, no, no. that doesn't solve the uh, oh, that uh, doesn't uh, define storing, what's uh, the uh, deduplication. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, for storing, no, uh, uh, saving the storage spaces. He is trying to save the storage space. Mm -hmm. Consider, if I well, uh, correct me if I am uh, explaining it wrong. You have deployed an image. Now you have sa you want to after working on that, you want to save that image. Now the initial image you started with, and the one you have uh, approached, uh, like you have um, uh, eventually come to, those have equal bits in some portions and some differences. He wants to ensure the similar ones are not copied over. Only the unique bits are there so that he can reconstruct that image. So I want to understand how fixed sized is good enough for you and yeah. if you have it. I, mean, I want to understand whether you actually have the technical depth on this uh, understanding or you just uh, like you have some things on your slide and you're just uh, explaining no, them. No, no. Uh, fixed size thinking is m one more simpler way so that uh, I can store the da data blocks easily, and uh, and we can uh, refer uh, it uh, by using the simple calculations of the offset for the offset. Hey, 
Uh, you mentioned about uh, calculating fingerprint, right? Yeah. I guess it is a hashing, right? Yeah, uh, hashing. Yeah, which kind of hashing? How do uh, we ensure that there is no collision? Uh, that's uh, less than one percent of collision is. So what happens if there is a collision? The data will be uh, wrongly placed or wrongly read, right? Yeah. How do we tackle that? It's a data loss. Data loss is not something that should happen. Uh, yeah. Really. In a file system. This is a minor problem. But no. It's not a minor problem. <laughs> one minute, one. Yeah. Okay, so the second question. Uh, yeah. Uh, so you mentioned about a cloud, right? Yeah. How about? Cloud. This cloud. file system operates in a cloud, yeah. right? So yeah. it should be a distributed one. Yeah. So uh, we can do this fingerprint from the client side yeah. or rather in the server side? Uh, no, client side means a liquid has its own clients liquid file system management. okay so you are uh, storing the data from a client yeah. you are requesting to store a data from client and you are storing in the server right uh, yeah and storing data in a uh, da distributed server database sir uh, so yeah. you can do this fingerprint calculation on the client side so yeah. that you can you don't if the it's already exists huh. you don't need to send it over the wire yeah so you can do a uh, fingerprint calculation on the client side huh. or in the server side no it's in client side uh, okay so you impl implement it in the client side yeah Okay, so uh, let's say uh, the file was already there in the one server. Yeah, it will check the meta server whether uh -huh. that fingerprint already exists. Then uh -huh. it won't copy. Uh, okay, so you are doing from the client side. Yeah. So already okay. meta file, meta file is already there in the client. Uh -huh. That's it. Okay. So Thank you. Okay. Why do you name it as liquid file system? What password? Ah, wait, I'll do it. Uh, uh, like uh, all the clients uh, are on the uh, what under uh, like its architecture is like that. No, I I still don't get that. No, I mean, if if you have to name any product, right? Yeah. You, you have to justify why did you name in that way? Okay. So uh, you just you know took the name and just give it no, like no. that, okay? okay? Is that the right yeah. choice? Okay. Yeah. Thank, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Kushwa, I am from NITK Suratkal. Um, I am final year B.Tech Computer Science student. Uh, my topic is Ajax Crawler for Extracting Workflow Web Application Python. So this is my final year major project. I am working for, uh, I was working for like five, six months. So I'll start with, so I'll, I'll start with explaining workflows. What is a, what is a, work, what is a workflow? Uh, workflow is basically a sequence of uh, steps or a, road, or a roadmap of views on a uh, web applications. Uh, you can see in the diagram, uh, like for the e-commerce e application, when you when you buy a product, okay. So what we do is like we uh, we check the product, we we add it to cart, uh, we check we go to checkout and we just uh, pay the payment and the transaction complete. So this kind of workflow, this kind of steps we follow for when we uh, when we buy a product or we any kind of activity we do. Okay, so, uh, so, like, how are how are the modern web applications? Like, what are the features of modern web applications? They are responsive. You can see that uh, the the application changes. Uh, they have a different behavior in phone, in a laptop, in tablet. They are interactive. They have so many things like uh, toggle buttons, sliders, and uh, sidebars, and a lot many things. Uh, Ajax, this is not new. This uh, and there are hundreds of frameworks like uh, React, Angular, and so many of frameworks for which are used in making web applications. They have MVC architecture, which is like the views and the logic is separated. Uh, they, they have a different um, components. And uh, so, what is web crawler? The crawler is like a thing which, 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 which is it's like a bot. It's a code which is written to extract the contents of an application or something, which can be the contents can be later used for mining and some other purpose. So you can see there are two types of code. Like there is an anchor tag. So when you click an when you click at the, with this type of kind of tag, it opens a new page with this the this address the, the hyperlink address is appended to the base address. So this is a kind of a new address is formed. So these are and the other is the form. The form is they have action and they have a method name. So uh, this kind of things crawler finds out and uh, tries to click them, tries to fill the form and tries to uh, reach a new state, reach a new content and stores them. So what are the challenges of crawlers? The, cr the challenges are searchability. So the crawler may main uh, motive, like the main thing which crawler wants to do is like crawl most of the content and decrease the hidden content. Like, 
the forms, the, the content behind the forms, the content behind the passwords and all. So decrease that content and increase the percentage, uh, percentage crawling. And the testability is, is like, when you want to test a website using Selenium or some tool, so that's, that can be done. Even Google has indexed more, less than 10% of the web. Google index mostly the public indexable pages which are behind anchor tags and forms. The forms which can be filled, not there are some hard, uh, hard rules defined on the fields of the form. So, so what if now there's a, now you can see there's an HTML, there is an uh, div element. So the div element, if normal crawler will see, the normal crawler we won't see that the, the normal normal div element, nothing is there. You can't click that div element without seeing the JavaScript. But in the JavaScript, it is defined that there is a handler function associated with the div element, and um, which the handler function opens a new page, opens a new page. So it's kind of a new new thing which is discovered, which is being discovered after clicking the element. But the normal crawler it won't detect. So we need something else, like something which will identify that, something which will uh, click this uh, tag and we will get to reach, get to reach a new state and, uh, and explore the new content. So these are the two kinds of things which are basically a uh, JavaScript DOM change events. So uh, I also want to highlight the, some Ajax faults, like there's an asynchronous communication between the client and server. Delta updates is like changing a some certain UI of a part of a UI of an application. Like uh, when you click a, but, uh, when you when you write, type when you search a query in a Google, so the contents keep on changing in the lower area. So that's actually delta updates. The, 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 that portion of the update, the, that portion of the page keeps on updating and uh, it keeps on making a request to a particular client. Uh, client side DOM elevation, which I have already explained. Event handling is the event event listeners. Uh, there are timing timing events in JavaScript. And moving on to so here there's an start age of state of the art tool crawl Jax, which is which is one of uh, Ajax crawlers which works very well. It's an event driven, event driven dynamic crawler in which there's a click events happen, DOM state changes, it records the events and it records the state work, state diagram of that particular application. Its, it's capability is like, it's, it, it can explore the JavaScript based DOM changes and it produces a model for uh, creating test cases and it also has, it has also has provision for defining the configuration of the crawl, crawling, like define the depth, defining the timing of the crawl and uh, like blacklisting some of the uh, divisions and some other features. So this is one of the results of the crawljax. This is one website demo.crawljax.com. So it crawls the website and it produces a graph. This is a screenshot of the graph. This is a center node and there are some other nodes which are connected to the center node. So we also started to make our own Ajax crawler. We wanted Ajax crawler for some bigger application, but this is a small module. So we started with making our own Ajax crawler in Python. So we started some scratch. We read the crawljax code, but it's more than 20k lines, and it's written in Java. So there are a lot of inheritance, a lot of nesting, and we can't we have to figure out the logic of the code. So we read the research paper written by them. We understood the basic requirements of the crawler they have made, and we started the coding each component from scratch. So we moved step by step. So what are the components of our Ajax crawler? This is the state machine. The state machine is for the component. So what the state machine stores is the state of the particular web application. There's an index page. Suppose there's a state, state machine what has? It's nodes. It has edges. So suppose there's an application which has an index HTML. So it, craw it, it clicks, there, it, there are some, in, there, are some uh, there might be some clickables in that index.html. So you click them, you reach a new state, like they reach an S1, you reach an S2, you reach, reach an, sorry, you reach an S4 and you reach an S3. Now, you, as you reach an S4, there are the, the, the number of the clickables get like uh, over. There are no more clickables found in that S4. So you be backtrack to S1, you, you go to S3, again the exhausted, so you get, go to S1, so you do, do the, in the state machine, you do the backtrack, you move from uh, different paths, you do you actually do the DFS search in the state machine. Uh, the other components are DOM comparator, it compares the two DOMs, the two document object model of two different, you can, you can say that the two different pages and you have to compare the, the DOM of the two pages. The candidate clickable finder, it finds the clickable, like there is an anchor tag, or there is a tag which has property like on mouse over, on mouse up, on mouse down, uh, some properties defined, so you need to find all those clickables because they can reach. They will be they will be the like uh, things which will take you to new, new events, new pages. There's form filler which can automatically fill the forms. URL comparator it compares the URL for finding the similarity between two states. Uh, there are parsers uh, and uh, so what are the steps involved in crawling? 
So you need to find, first thing is find the new clickables. As you get the clickables, click particular, click a, click one, click, uh, try to do that event. When after doing that event, you find the DOM tree. So evaluate the previous DOM tree you have encountered during the state machine. Okay, you have encountered. So if, if it matches, so it's not a new state. If it's a new state, then do again explore, uh, keep on exploring. Uh, so, so the biggest challenge while doing this is state explosion. So if you know, like, suppose imagine a website like Amazon.com. Uh, if you start crawling that Amazon.com website, you open the page Amazon.com, you find a lot of not many products in that there. You click one product, you will find again lot many products. So if you keep on doing that, you will like, you will you will have end up with like thousands thousands of states. You don't want that. So you want to avoid the state, you want to avoid similar state, you want to remove the similar states from the state machine. So I will take a simpler example, simple example to explain the, what the concept of state machine, what, how, do, how do we remove the state, how do we solve the state explosion problem. Like you can see there are two similar DOMs. First is a uh, web page of a TV, TV ad. Second is a web page of a TV washing machine. You can see the DOM is almost, the DOM structure is almost same, it's, it's actually same. Only the contents of the DOM is changed, like description of TV, description of washing machine. So these are similar DOMs. We don't want two different states for these two DOMs. We only want one, one state, which is like this. So uh, this way we'll reduce the uh, state explosion. Second is URL comparator. You can see that two URLs are same. Only the request parameter values are changed. So they are actually calling the same URL, but they are giving a different parameter. So it's like a, they, are called, they are asking for a different product, some different uh, variety. So it, they will lead to same DOM state. So these are kind of uh, hacks or things which we ha which which I have. These are simpler things. There are more and more complicated things, more rule based things, but I can't explain it here. So uh, this uh, I want to explain the implementation how I did. Uh, like this is Python code. It's around 1.5 k lines of code compared to the crawljax code because Python is very you can write very less lines of code. You can do very easily. Uh, it uses Selenium Python for uh, simulating the behavior of the events. Network X for storing the graph, and Matplotlib and D3JS for uh, displaying the results. Beautiful Soup and LXML for parsing. So I want to go for demo. So this is the uh, this is the main file which has which is, which, which is there are parameters are defined arguments are defined so you can see the there are parameters like start URL you give the start URL for the crawl you give the blacklist URL which you want to don't want to crawl like like there is a website and down there is a contact us form there is something which is which will which is leading to some other domain which you don't want so you can blacklist the, blacklist those things you can define the scope like which where you want to crawl like define the scope products you can you can only crawl those products. Uh, you can define the depth, you can define the time of the crawl, like the time limit. And I have a simple script. Uh, so this is the script, uh, which I am, which I am, uh, I am, I'm crawling this demo.crawljax.com, the same website which is crawled by the crawljax. This is the scope and this is blacklisting. I'm blacklisting one, one, uh, one division. So I'm running this. So the crawl has started. You can see the website is opening, and uh, these are clickable clickables which I find out, and the behavior is simulated here. It's tried to clicking, it tries to click one thing, and it checks the DOM. If it DOMs is already find out, it it if then it then the, it rejects the state. If it's not, then it tries to find that new state. It tries to crawl that particular state. So it keep on doing until it crawl. It takes it, it takes at least three minutes to crawl. So I have the result. This is the result. This is the result, this is produced, this is a graph. You can't see particular like which, which is thing, which, which is the particular page, but actually I have uh, stopped that thing. I have stopped. It takes time that I have stopped. So these are the results produced. You can see these are the edges. These are the edges which are produced like zero, 01. So what is the event which is being done to, pro to get to one from zero? So these are the like 
all the edges of that graph. These are the nodes of the graph. There are 15 nodes. Uh, one node can be reached from after uh, after uh, opening this this URL and clicking this thing. Second node is like all the things are displayed. Like you have complete graph of uh, of particular crawl. I think I exceeded time limit. Uh, so uh, thank you. You can you can fork this uh, project and you can check out uh, more. They, uh, thank you. Uh, can you tell me how do you generate the DOM tree for your DOM comparator? The DOM tree? DOM tree has to be generated, right? To compare the two DOM trees of different pages. <coughs> DOM tree is nothing but the HTML code of that particular uh, website. This is the HTML code, right? So you yeah. pass this HTML code as an XML, right? Yeah, you, you, pass, you pass this HTML code as XML. So you get HTML as the root node and the nodes the, the internal elements as a nodes. So you get a DOM tree. Now you can compare the two DOM tree difference. Now you calculate the, the tree difference of the uh, the true the two no, the two HTML pages. Uh, use the existing thing or yeah, you? use the library. There's an XML dot XML yeah. dot div dot HTML div that produces the difference yeah. of the That's particular DOM tree. I wanted to know. And uh, uh, when do you stop this uh, uh, searching of the nodes? Means you said at some point of time. It'll be start backtracking, right? Yeah, it backtracks. So I mean, you have to store that information early, like when you crawl. So you have you are you are at a particular node. Now you reach a particular second node. Uh, like I will take the example from here. Yeah, you are a particular first node. Now you reach S1. So you need to store that information from reach that you re you restore the information. You uh, like you click particular event, particular element for reaching S1. You have to store this in S1. Now you go to S4. Now you have to backtrack. You can use that same information. Because in, Aj in Ajax websites, what happens? The URL doesn't change. The URL remains the same. So uh, you have to do the, you have to read, you have to retry all those events, what you did to reach the parent node. So you need to store that information in a, in a particular node. Okay. Thank you. Um, can you explain the usefulness of uh, what you're trying to do. Uh, okay, so. Or what's the purpose, so to say? Like, like when you extract the workflow, like when you extract the state diagram of a particular web application, the first thing, like I can do, I can, I can bring three, three, three things. First thing is, you can, developer can see like, what's the workflow of my application? Like, when, you, when I do this, I reach this event. I reach this page. When I click this, I reach this page. So he sees that, the, uh, yeah, the website is looks looks fine to me. Like, whatever, I, whatever the workflow I have designed is same as, the generated workflow. The second thing is you can generate a test case for this. This uh, you can generate a test cases for the workflow. Like you, you click a form. Okay, so you have, uh, you have, you click one particular anchor tag. You click a form. So you have the information like what is the uh, flow of that application. So you can generate test cases for this. The third thing which we want to do, which we are working on, is finding the vulnerability in appli web, uh, web application. It's like when you do the e-commerce. When there is an e-commerce application, you do the transaction. You add to cart, you move to checkout, you pay the whatever thing, and you purchase a commodity. So there's a workflow. Now I want to check. Now I will store this request thing, all the request packets, and I will try to simulate the same thing, removing the purchase, removing the uh, payment, payment page, removing the payment page, and I will try to simulate that workflow. If it works, then there is a vulnerability in application, which, I'm, which we are trying to do. That's why we have developed this thing. Okay, got it. Um, yes. And uh, what's extra that you have done that is not only a, like a use case of crawljax? Because what you are explaining is basically we have used crawljax. That's what yeah, I understand. Yeah, the crawljax. That's that's all that I understand. Like the crawljax works in Java. It's written in Java. And we what we were what we were developing we were we would have developed some small modules which are already in Python. So we want to we want completely crawl we want to move that crawljax thing in Python. We want that in Python. It's not available. We tried to work. We tried to see the code. It's not. It didn't, didn't work. Hello. Why do you need that in Python? Sir, because the because the overall project which was which was being developed is a big project. It is a small part of that project. So that module we we needed we need a uh, our 
code in python I, I can't, uh, see i have not ever of uh, yes. i'm not very good in python but uh, can't you have a kind of plugin yeah where there you are there are plugin kind of things but uh, it is not giving the particular kind of output which we want we want a particular json kind of output like uh, for for the state diagram there are plugin kind of thing available in projects we tried that but it's not very useful for us so we we developed in our own. okay okay thank you Thank you. Thank you. One question. Hey, Adin. I have one question. Yeah. We drew for Amazon or uh, some. Sir, there are some false positives. I can say there are some false positives. Ah. But uh, we haven't measured the efficiency of the tool. But I can say there will be very less false positives because if your parameters are same, URL the requesting URL is same, the parameters are same, their values are different. So there yeah. might be chances. There might be chance that they are same state. So I'm just considering. Uh, so. Thanks. Thank you so much.